Okay folks, uh, we're back again in order to carry out the uh, part three of uh, this little uh, still life uh, exercise. Right now look, they do say the first 30 seconds of a video is critical. You must grab the person's imagination. Okay look, seeing as all I'm going to be talking about is this glass, um, I can't just rely on my charismatic chatter so look here's a little glass for you bring up your chair that's for you mmm jolly good uh, look don't panic folks it's a mold punch, non-alcoholic. I need my wits about me on this one. Okay, so enough of my silliness. Let's get on with the lesson. Right now we've um, tackled the grapes in part one of this little still life. And on that hopefully you will have learned a few little recovery skills when they, things get a little bit blotchy. Uh, we've looked at the apple and I did say I would um, show you an, an alternative um, way of painting an apple but uh, at this moment in time I need to move on to the actual glass. Now from the word go I did say this is not a picture it is an exercise. Now because I've got a segregation point between my grapes and my apple, it means to say that I could carry out both on the same uh, sheet of paper here. But hopefully you have been using yours uh, on separate pieces of paper uh, and many, many sacrifice apples. So I've got a little bit of a problem here uh, because now I come to do the glass. This is a little bit like trying to put the sky uh, in on a landscape after you put the trees in. So uh, in order uh, to help me on this one I'm going to remove that stalk uh, in the process which I showed you on the last video and then I shall pop it back. But from your point of view uh, I would like you to just practice the glass without the grapes and without the apple and there is logic behind this. If I put the glass in first and then put the grapes in, uh, you would have the tendency to keep putting the, the, the glass in before you actually practiced your uh, little grapes on their own. And that would also apply to the apple. So uh, I'm going to remove the, the apple and the grapes uh, while we just get a little look at this glass. Um, and it's like I say, it, it, there's not a lot of colour in this one. Um, and it will visually be a little bit bland, but there is still a tremendous amount of learning to do. Look, I know um, I can be accused of uh, endless talk, but it is this talk that you don't get from a book. So you need to know what is going through my head and the way I'm recovering from things when they don't go quite the way I want them to go. And look, you don't have to agree with me. Get a dozen tutors on watercolours and you'll get a dozen different views about things. So you need to look at other people's um, ways and means of overcoming some of these problems. But I can only, and it may well be that after you've practiced a few of these, that you may actually disagree with me. And that is absolutely fine, right? This is not about me, it is about you, right? And if you realize that um, I'm not always right, and you may favor a, 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 another person's way of going about it, Adopt it, take it, and use it, and make it yours, okay? All I can do is to give you an insight 
into what is going on during the course of painting this or any other picture. Right, I will stop my lecturing and get my glass. Here we have it. The glass. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the ping which I could not get off the grapes or off the apple. So there's my first clue. It is a man-made manufactured thing. Um, and I'm stating the obvious here. It's void of colour. <laughs> if it wasn't if it wasn't round, you wouldn't even know it was there. <laughs> You'd see straight through it. So looking at this is a little bit like looking at a polar bear in a snowstorm. So we need to understand what we can and what we can't do with this glass. Okay, now we can make it a little bit more interesting just by adding some water. In actual fact, if you look at the actual uh, shadow under there, I think you'll find that will change. Yeah, we've got a little change there. If the light was down a little bit lower, that would be a little bit longer. Um, and now that now gives us a top rim, a water level and reflections and the lower it. So we've now got, uh, it's a little bit more interesting already. And on my painting, I, 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 I put water in, or I'm about to put water in, uh, so that it doesn't come in line with the background. Of the back. I can't tip that up or, or uh, it will all spill out. Uh, so you can put uh, orange juice in there or uh, apple juice, whatever you want to do. Uh, it will give you a few more uh, possibilities but it will also give you a few more problems uh, because now the, the lower half will be different to the top half. But being glass and transparent, all it can do is reflect. So it is these reflections which we're going to be tackling in this uh, little gentle wash here. And obviously if you put uh, uh, something in it, look, it will, uh, it will fragment the actual um, straight object in there. So we don't need any of those complications. And if it was uh, been um, engraved, uh, a flash glass you've now got all sorts of different uh, light refractions going on so this is the reason why I've kept kept it very simple very plain and it's void of color but I mean say if you put something close to it it will adopt some of the colors from its surrounding uh, it, look it, it has no other choice if I put a Okay, you can say, yeah, okay, we're seeing through it. But look, even there, look, it's adopting some of those colours. And that is one of the reasons why I, I put that little bit of flash of yellow down on that first one. Okay, so now we know what it is, what we're hoping to achieve. Um, let's go for it. Right now, we've looked at the glass. And now we need to look at uh, the wash we're going to paint the glass in. And this is uh, going to give me a, a good opportunity uh, for a little bit more sort of technical teaching. <laughs> You've had the spectacular bit and the silly bit up front. So get your brain in order now. Right now, red, blue and yellow. They are your three primary colours. Any combination, if we take the red and we take the blue and we mix them together, that is now a second primary colour. If I take the blue and the yellow, which will give me green, green is a second primary colour. So any combination, if I was to take the red and the yellow, it gives me orange. So that is also a second primary colour. Right now, when I start talking about 
greys. I'm actually talking about sort of neutral colours. They're called uh, tertiary colours. Uh, now tertiary is a very, very unusual word. Um, it is a genuine word, but you don't. It doesn't come up in sort of uh, 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 candlelight dinner conversations. So, for this purpose, let's call it uh, neutral. And neutral colours are very, very good. That is when you get a combination of all three, but in varying different amounts. So, if I was to take my blue, a little spot of red, and then add a little spot of yellow, look, it turns to what you could describe as mud, right? Uh, but you can control this mud and this is what happens to your paintings when you first get started. You end up with these uh, muddy colours um, because uh, your water is contaminated or you're not allowing things to dry. Look, there's a muddy colour. Right? You're not allowing things to dry before you uh, move on to the, uh, the, the thing alongside it. And they end up as mud, right? So, you, they are very good and they are very useful in order to help um, enhance some of the uh, primary and second primary colours. So, I always tend to describe them as neutral colours. Uh, I use them in my shadows and shades. Look, here's a nice little one for a nice little bit of shadow work, right? Um, it's a neutral, warm colour. I can I, I can have a cool one depending on which reds and yellows I actually use. When I'm talking about cool, I'm talking about distance, right? And this one's got the uh, uh, ultramarine in it, and that automatically is a lot lot warmer than the the uh, cobalt blues. So. I can only describe this as um, a neutral colour with a leaning in a certain direction. So in other words, look, if I put in more yellow, it leans, it's a neutral tone, but it leans towards the yellow. If I add a little bit more red to it, it, uh, it leans towards the red neutral colour. There we are. On there. So, I need to drop my cam, uh, zoom the camera in so you can just see that a little bit more. There we go. Right. And so when people first start off and they start off with their watercolour paintings, they end up with this sort of muddy scene. That is actually what is happening. And these are brilliant, providing you understand them and uh, you use them well. So in this particular case, because the glass has got no defined colour, that is why I'm going to be mixing up a colour which is, like the glass, neutral. I'm going to quieten that down just a little bit more with a little bit more yellow. There we go. Right now, if I if I leant towards the red, it would mean to say that my glass and my background would be hot, and I, I, I'm not looking for a, a hot glass. Okay, so now you know exactly what it is I'm doing there. Right now, there's one more thing I'm going to do. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, there's one more thing I'm going to do uh, now. It's all right, the dog's getting a bit concerned. I'm coughing like she is. Uh, look, I'm going to um, show you another brush. And the reason I'm doing all, the, all, all of this now is because I don't want to keep interrupting the actual uh, painting as I'm going along. And it will also give you a chance to zoom back to the point where <laughs> I actually start doing something. Right, um, so let me show you another brush. Right now, I want to uh, introduce you to a, a new type of brush here, and this one comes from my little budget set. It is synthetic and it's known as a flat, 
sometimes it's known as a chisel um, in oil paints it's actually known as a shovel because we can shovel an awful lot of oil paint onto our canvas but the most common name for it on um, watercolours is a one stroke brush and you will see this uh, commonly used on YouTube uh, when people are doing sort of uh, little soft peckles what they're doing is they're putting a little bit of colour onto one corner and uh, plain water on the other corner and they can use it to actually blend the colours in right now look I've got another one here this is virtually the same um, it's a slightly better quality it is synthetic nevertheless I've got look a very large one here and this is a very very old brush of mine and uh, been with me a long time and we can use these big broad ones and they do actually come wider than this uh, for putting on great big washes uh, on skies and around our clouds and things of that nature right now I've also got look I've got a little tiny one here let me see I think you can just see let me see if I can get that in focus look there we go it's a little it's a little chiseled end on there okay very very useful Right now, um, let me just demonstrate to you what we can do with this uh, brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a little bit of colour, a little bit of colour on one corner and opposite colour on the other corner. That might be just a little bit too wet, but let's give it a shot. Okay, right now, what I'm going to do is make sure I'm in focus there. Right, I'm just going to blend this round. Yes, we, we've got that. Right, what I can also do with this one, just picking up a little bit more colour. Look, I can use it uh, straight, like so. Uh, or I can use it on a zigzag, up, down, up, down, up, down. Right. Okay, it's a little bit on, on the weak side, um, a little bit too much water. But you can actually see what the, uh, the possibilities of what one can do with this brush. Right, now I've got another one here. <coughs> right, stand by, you need the tissues on this one. Look, um, when I'm talking about budget brushes and cheap brushes, now this one I can really call cheap. I was taking the dogs for a walk in between <laughs> a rainy period and lo and behold I saw this glistening uh, by the side of the road. And me being me, I had to go and have a look to see what it was. And I got the feeling very early that it might well be a brush. And would you believe, yes, it is a little one-stroke flat brush. When I say flat, look, the poor old thing's been run over a few times. Probably dropped out of a, a, some school uh, children's um, satchel or something like that at some point or another. And it was just sort of laying there, um, looking all forlorn and bedraggled <laughs> in, in, in the wet road. And so I went over and I picked it up, and would you believe it? You know, I could almost hear it saying, Oh, Perry, <laughs> I'm not very well. Take me home, will you? <laughs> Look after me. <laughs> well, no, in actual fact, it was a little bit weaker than that. <laughs> look, 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 you want a tissue now? <laughs> anyway, I took it home and I popped it in my jar uh, after giving it a little. Uh, uh, rinse in lukewarm water and it's been sitting in my jar and drying out and I think it's uh, feeling reasonably well now so I'm going to be using this brush um, when I come to do my apple look you, n you never know you know just when you think life is all over well for the little brush it was um, all of a sudden it's going to suddenly become a celebrity brush <laughs> used on YouTube, right, in my global school, would you believe, well there you go, Let, I don't know, of all the roads, 
in all the towns, in all the countries, he just happened to find me. There you go. You never know, do you? Well, I'm going to stop chatting on about this one and let get this little brush underway. Right now, um, before I get my brushes wet, we are moving into a very, very difficult area uh, with this glass. Right, <laughs> so so much from me and my water wings. Right, don't worry, they're pumped up quite high. You may have noticed that there's very, very few. Uh, watercolour um, demonstrations uh, on actual glass <laughs> because it is where angels fear to tread but uh, hey ho look we're artists so if you can master a little bit of this you're going to be one jump ahead right now look when it came to these grapes they were gentle washes now look at these little heavy lines around the outside edges they are the graphite we got from um, transferred from off our tracing and if I want to avoid those uh, then my uh, my indication lines would be so light that uh, it would be would have been very very difficult for the camera to actually have seen them so I went in a little, in a little bit heavier and as a result of which when the wash goes over it highlights um, uh, the graphite on there so look, I had them around uh, the, the apple as well and after I've uh, finished the painting uh, I can just very very gently remove them like so but once um, watercolour has gone over the top it's very very difficult to move them because they're being protected by that little wash right so uh, not so easy to move but not to worry, um, I'm going to take advantage of some of this um, by in actual fact pumping up my glass. Uh, look, here's one I've got underneath there. Right now, so what I'm doing now is I'm using my graphite pencil and I'm just strengthening up the lines which is going to help me in actual fact because it's going to give me a better indication line of where I'm, uh, my wash is going to go. Now look, note on the actual uh, liquid inside it doesn't come up to that outer edge of the glass because the glass has got a thickness to it. Um, look, it's quite thick. So look, if you actually look, look at the water it doesn't come up to the, the outer edge, it's on the inside. So the top rim, outer edge, bottom rim, outer edge, fine. But the, the, the liquid inside, keep it back just a little bit. And the liquid will give quite a hard line here. And a hard line in the front of the glass here. But I want the, the highlights, which is going to be the whites. So I'm, I'm going to leave that free, and I'm going to leave that free along the back there. Right. Um, and I can drop in a little bit heavier, along, obviously, along the bottom of the glass. Right now, there's going to be another problem for me here. Look, when we did these grapes, I was relying on gravity to give me that uh, lower weight on the actual grapes. When I come to do my uh, fluid in the glass, I don't want the gravity to come down and all pile up on top of those grapes uh, because they're supposed to be going down, right, down the back of the grapes. All right? So uh, when it comes to that, what I'll actually do is I'm going to turn it upside down paint mount and let the gravity take it up towards this um, water line there. Anyway, that's another problem for me later on. Okay, so if you want to take a little break, uh, you've been sitting here for a little while, um, <laughs> maybe you need something a little stronger than that uh, uh, mould punch, I'll tell you what, I'll go and make a cup of tea and then we'll come back and get involved as I said, where angels fear to tread, that's where we're going, folks. Okay, folks, look, uh, 
here is my wash now look it is really is a wash and it's I made it up from cobalt blue cadmium yellow and cadmium red uh, the reason I'm using uh, the uh, cobalt blue is because that is what I used in the actual grapes so the whole picture will hopefully relate right now look every time I go to this I will stir it up because the sediment will drop to the bottom very very rapidly and that will change the colour and I've also got my plain water on standby so let's bring it on uh, right I'm gonna have to tip this to one side just a little bit for my comfort here by the way and I'm going down the back of the glass but look I'm coming straight across that top rim and into the water and I'm going to leave that little white area there because that's where I need to get the highlight so on this one we're going to have highlights and lowlights right, I don't want it too busy right now I'm now going to have I done that bit over there so I have to tip it just to see see what I've done okay there we go right that will do okay right now I'm now going to hit the actual water and I'm going to rely on a little bit of gravity here right now I'm leaving a couple of little bits of highlight Right now look, I want you to notice, look, the water is, hasn't reached the edge of the glass because the glass has got a thickness. So it can't reach the edge of the glass. It may get a little bit diffused around there. Right, I'm now coming down into the water zone. I'm going to leave just a little bit of highlight there. I don't quite know why. Look. I put a still shot of a glass on this video just in case you you don't have one um, a glass handy you can look at that but look don't get over trapped um, with it in detail as such you're looking at it uh, from a reference point of view you will find that the moment you move the glass or take one, take one on your, uh, um, maybe you've got a, a phone picture thing, take one on there. But you will find the moment you move something just fractionally, the lights will change anyway. So all you're doing is picking up the, um, the essence of the glass and the water. Right now, I've now dropped into the lower section here. And I can allow a certain amount of gravity to take control. I'm still going to leave just a little bit of highlight there. Right now, I'm also going to place in the bottom of the glass. <laughs> now, it's got to have a bottom or it'll all run out. I'm stating the obvious. Um, but sometimes we tend to miss the obvious. Right, now, there is my first layer on my glass. Right, can you see that? Look, I'm going to zoom that. <laughs> of course you can't. <laughs> it's glass, isn't it? Right, look, I'm going to zoom that in a bit closer. There it is. Look, it's very, very weak. Right, but not to worry because I'm going to pump it up when it's dry so leave it alone let it dry put it on a very very shallow slope right now the first layer that is now dry so 
I'm about to put the uh, second layer on and uh, what I need to do this time is to try and keep out of the way of the camera. Sorry about that. Okay, right, here we go. Let me see now. Okay, right, now, between this rim here and uh, the actual water, it is fractionally darker than the uh, back section because we've got a double glass going on here. So I need to make this, this side just a little bit darker. So I'll put another wash on there. Leaving just that little bit of white there. Just there. I can drop into the water. Doesn't matter too much at this moment in time. And then I'm going to put the water in. Leaving just little bits of white here and there and allowing gravity to come down to this section here. Look, if I'm a little bit on the quiet side, I'm actually <laughs> concentrating. Um, I want that a little bit darker up there. So do it. Right. Now what I've done, look, I've made that darker at the top but not in this bottom section. Whereas this section is slightly darker in this section. Than, so I'm getting, a, 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 even though it's a wash, I'm getting a little bit of a um, contrast there. Right now, this area down there, as soon as we get into this area here, it is lighter uh, than um, this section because the light is diffused in this area. But nevertheless, look, I'm picking up a little bit of plain water now and I'm going to fuse that off into the actual glass. There we go. Right, now this side of the glass, seeing as the light is coming from this side, can be just a little bit darker than what I've got it. That wash is even weaker because I hit the plain water. Because I want a little bit of um, lit area around here. Come on wash, do your work. Right now, don't get impatient with it. I, I'm getting a little bit impatient there. Okay, so that is going to give me that little bit of highlight just in that area there. I'm now, that's a bit weak, so I'm just going to drop a little bit there, not a lot. There we go. And I'm now going to go back to the bottom of the glass and make sure I keep it keep this in camera shot this time. And I, I want a little bit of weight just here because this is the leading front of the glass. Oh, that is a big, dangerous puddle there at the moment. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now start thinking about the shadow on this glass. So, let's, and it's fairly high, so I'm going to come out, take it out to the side, and it comes around, around about there, and it drops away, off to the side. Keep it Keep it nice and flat going out there. And I want that um, little 
highlight in there to be a little bit softer so I've just picked up a little bit of water and I'll just soften it out. No, no, the shadow on the actual glass gets very diffused as it's uh, moving away from the glass. Right now I'm now going to put in the bottom of the glass stir up my wash every time I uh, pick up a little bit of water it weakens the wash on my brush there we go I want to strengthen this corner up there, but if I do, it will all run round to the uh, gravity, it will take it round there. So, as I said, look, it's a game of patience. Look, you can now see the glass. Take that back over to there. I want it over here. Okay, I'll put another layer on. Now, what I'm going to do now is to allow this one to dry. Look, we've got a glass uh, of water. <laughs> now, it could be said, is that it? <laughs> uh, there's you, been sitting there for the last half an hour, drinking my tea, listening to me waffling on. <laughs> you could be said, why didn't you do this in the first ten minutes, Barry? Um, yeah, that, that could, there could be some truth in that. But what we're actually doing is we're looking at the object, um, trying to understand it and honing up uh, our skills in order to uh, achieve it. Um, and that's what takes the time. I must stop because that keeps running down to the bottom of my glass. OK, I'm going to stop chatting and let this dry. Right now this uh, second layer is now dry, so here now comes my third layer. So I'm going to have to turn this sideways. I've just added a little bit on my water line there and I'm going to add a little bit down the bottom of the glass. where the gravity is that adds that little bit of extra weight down there which I need and weight in the bottom of the glass I need. Right, I think that will do because gravity will take that down for me. Strengthen up my shadows now. I'm going to look. I've got a, 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 a one coat uh, of the shadow there, but I'm going to deepen that shadow with a second coat on the inside of that first shadow I put on. And it comes off round about that area there. And it's a fairly soft shadow on the outside edge here. Right, I think that can be just a little bit darker. Uh, so I'm going to put a third coat on, uh, third, one, two, fourth coat on this one there. Right, let me have a quick look at the top here. 
Yes, I think we can do with a little bit more depth at the back here. Okay, right now, what I'm going to do now is I'm um, going to put a little bit more on the back, that top area there. Then I'm going to let this one dry, and then I'm just going to tweak the whole thing uh, with a pencil. On when I come to do my actual um, demonstration one, um, I may well, I may just use a brush. Uh, I don't necessarily think there's going to be a lot of advantage to it because this pencil will work. Um, so if you don't want to use a brush, use a pencil. Bear in mind that. I've had a lot more experience with the little brushes, um, <laughs> in fact so much so I, I was probably using those when your grandparents were still dreaming about you, <laughs> their grandchild. <laughs> so that doesn't mean to say that I'm going to be any better at it than you, uh, because my eyes are not quite what they used to be, but having said that, Go for it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter because use the pencil. I'm going to leave this one to dry now. Right now, I've uh, strengthened up my wash a little bit by taking a bit of the wash and putting it on my palette and just adding a little bit more colour to it. Right now, I'm now going to start the tweaking uh, using my brush. So, uh, just trying to remember what I need to do. Right, I've dropped that little bit of colour down the side of the glass there. And remember, look, I, the reason I'm actually doing this is because I need that ping. Um, I've just picked up fresh water and I've just softened the edge there. Might pick up a little bit more colour. I don't think this is going to be strong enough just in itself. But well, I'm just going to drop this line round here now. Right, note the way I'm using my brush. I'm letting the hairs follow my follow the brush. I'm not going to try and skid them across there. And this is the secret to getting these little lines in. And I'm going to, I can make that even finer in a moment, he says. Now, there's no reason why you shouldn't be using a pencil. a sharp corner on there because the bottom of the glass is slightly rounded so I've just rounded that off and I'll do the same this side Even just a little little highlight there. <coughs> Mixing up just a little bit more colour here. And it's 
very heavy at the back of the glass. I didn't mean to get this uh, deep into this um, sacrifice glass, by the way. Uh, I was just going to give you an indication, but I find I'm getting rather engrossed in it now. Uh, look, it may well be as a result of which I'm going to run out of time to uh, complete. The project I was doing but nevertheless look I, I think this is important so um, I'll come back um, if need be rather than rush my way through something all it means is you'll have to listen to a bit more of my waffle <laughs> right um, I'm now going to strengthen up this little bit of sh shading let me zoom that back a bit, maybe you can see what's going on, that's if my head doesn't get in the way. And it comes up quite high at the back there. So I've just popped that in, and a little tiny bit under there, I'm going to water that. Remember that it's a soft shadow. And I need to pump that up in order to get that little bit of white in there. Soften it off. Now look, it still stays, stays white even though I've uh, softened it off a bit. Right now, while I'm working away here. It's like I say, th this was originally uh, just going to be a little sacrifice glass and I find um, it's taken up a lot more time than I was actually expecting. So what I'm going to do, because it was a sacrifice glass, look, it was in order to take me in um, or give me information when I come to do my, put all the items together. Now look, I need to find out what, what is actually happening here, look. So look, what I'm going to, if I can get this in the way, look, this is so wet, I'm liable to spill the water in the glass. Um, bear with me. Right, now, here's one of my little sacrifice apples. And I'm going to lay it alongside and just look at my glass. And I can see, look, it's very weak in this little area there. So now I know that I need to strengthen it up a little bit. And here's my sacrifice grapes. Look, I can just lay them on there. And I can see this great area of weakness. So I need to strengthen that up. So that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, as far as the gravity is concerned, coming back down uh, behind the grate. It, the gravity can come down behind the grate, but it mustn't be on the top there. So, look, I'm, I'm also in a learning process here. So, I'm now going to pick up my wash again. And I'm going to strengthen that side. There we are, I've strengthened that down there. And this is also very, very weak. So I'm going to strengthen that. Look, I'm going to leave that little tiny white line where the water comes through there. Because that's what water tends to do. It has like a skin on it and... Uh, It leaves that little white line in exactly the same way as a rim does actually. This rim at the top here, although it's, it's dark, it will also leave a little tiny white line just there. That comes back to observation again. 
Right now look, if I've overdone this, then I've overdone it. Um, that is not the end of the world. Just like with the grapes, um, I can show you some re little recovery um, techniques here. So we'll let this dry off and then we'll just look at one or two of the recovery processes or options still open to me. Okay, it's now dry. Now look, just before I tweak this up with my pencil, this is where my little foundling brush will come in handy. Now, if it doesn't, then it will be assigned to the back of the drawer along with my bad hair day brush. Look, what I'm doing, I've got clean, pristine clear water and I've just eased the water out. And on the grapes, they were small enough for me to drop a big puddle onto um, and that helped clean back some of the blotchy bits. Uh, but this glass is much, much too large for me to swamp the whole thing with water. So, okay little brush, time for you to do your thing. Right, now, I'm going to use it as a one stroke. Straight down. Turn it over. Straight down. Right, now that is cleaning out some of the little blotches uh, and you will get blotches if you put wash over wash. Right, rinse the brush and look I want to clean back a little bit there. Uh, I'm, hum I'm happy with the top so look I'm taking my little brush one stroke down and it's removed just a little bit of the wash water there. So look, it's cleaning the glass. The last thing you want is a mucky glass. Beautiful, you're doing your job. Coming to my rescue. Right, the rest of it is not too bad actually, but uh, so I'm not going to do it just for the sake of doing it. But if if I did want to remove just a little bit of that, I can use the brush on its side, and it will clean back just a little bit of that line for me. And so if I've, I've overrun on the top or something like that. Uh, I will use this brush just to clean the areas back. So there's another little bit of interesting information you've gained. Um, okay, you paid a heavy price <laughs> sitting there for ages. Right, now I can now get my pencil and I must make sure it's absolutely sharp. And I'm going to tweak now. So I want to tweak down the edge there. Right, that little low light actually gives me a little ping to my glass. Uh, so you don't just get pings from uh, highlights, you also get nice little pings from low lights. And I can strengthen up just along this area here to give me that ping along there. Now using the pencil is not in any way or form cheating. When I'm doing fairies or other people are doing fairies and they're using these very soft um, washes because the delicate fairies um, they will tend to outline the washes using pencil, if not during the process of the drawing like we have with the grapes. 
that's a little bit too wet for me to work on really. Oh look, I'm getting a nice sharp, sharp line on there. Oh, I like that. And look, I'm actually taking it in to the actual water area. And I'm going to do exactly the same down the bottom end of the glass here. Now, I know that this is going to be covered by an apple, but it crossed my mind, not when I started, but halfway through here, seeing as I was getting a little bit engrossed, that actually you might actually enjoy doing this as a separate item in the same way as uh, you did with the apple and the grapes. So yes, it's true I didn't finish the video, but you've got something to play around with while I'm sorting um, the rest of the video out. So I'm getting a little bit of hard line in there. Sharpen this up a little bit. Sharpen this up a little bit up there. Once I've started, let it go. Bring it back when it changes direction or you meet something. It's a little bit wobbly, isn't it? Let's, let's, uh, let's just straighten that up. I said I was going to let it go, but it was a little bit wobbly. Right now, looking at it, I can have some more on the top here. Just give a little bit more thickness there. And I can even shade it just fractionally underneath it, leaving that little white line, which you will get on the glass. Now, I don't want it to come up to a ping, so it's a... I need to zoom that in very close now. Right, you can just see that little tiny line going in there. Yes, and that is possible with a, with a brush, by the way. And I'll show you how in the next video. Look, I can get a little bit more shading in there. And this is perfectly legitimate thing to do, by the way. I'm not going to put a deep one over the back there because that, um, shall I? No, I'm, I'm not going to do that because once again, less is more. And it's, it, it is a very unusual thing to see this um, in watercolour anyway. But now you've watched me working away at it, you can start to understand why. Okay, right, now you've got a um, something, I'm now going to zoom that back, you've got something on which to work here. Um, and it's like I say, if you can master this, you're going to be one step ahead. You're going to see a lot of apples and grapes, but not too many of these in watercolour. Um, if you see these, they will normally be in the pencil graphite. I understand why. Okay, so stop my chatting. And if I cut this video a little bit short, that will also give me an opportunity to come back with the uh, alternative apple, which I was uh, promising. Right, now that little bit of pencil work I did, I did on here, look, I've now got a smaller brush and I've got my wash 
and what I'm going to do is look I'm going to bury the graphite now what I'm doing is perfectly legitimate by the way because what I'm actually doing is I'm turning the graphite into a watercolour uh, so don't suddenly think to yourself oh that's not a pure watercolour it is it is a watercolour all right and it's pure so sometimes if we're doing something like a grape it's a bit of advance but uh, we might do a bit of uh, what is known as underpainting so we put down a gentle wash and then uh, a, a, a neutral wash and then we put the uh, pale green over the top it's a little bit complex and a little bit advanced uh, so I haven't gone down that road but look if you find that you uh, regardless of the subject matter you're on you suddenly do a little bit of pencil work just bury it alright uh, and then you're back where you started it's a useful little tip by the way now look I've got to call this a day uh, because I just go on and on and on well <laughs> many of my viewers already know that uh, but look I think I did the right thing going right the way through on this glass because if I'd just done uh, the glass uh, with, it, with my apple and my grapes in front of it right you would have been a master at the top of a glass <laughs> but never quite know what to do with the bottom of the glass so uh, I think I made the right decision there uh, right now one more thing if you came across this video uh, by accident and you have found some of the things which I've been doing here uh, will enhance your own watercolours uh, or if you want to look at the, my sacrifice grapes which I've been on about Go to the bottom left hand corner uh, where I'm pointing, uh, click on my name, that will bring you to my channel. So there you'll find part one and part two and one or two other little items which uh, you might find uh, helpful to you. Right now, whatever you do, keep a sense of humour and an open fresh mind, alright? Take from me that which you find useful, reject that which you do not. Right, so if you go there to my channel, there is a chair reserved specially for you. Uh, it is there day and night 24 7, right? <laughs> and you are very, very welcome. So if you find that you, you can't sleep one night, right, go and switch me on. And you'll soon find yourself drifting off or glazing over. Okay, I must move on. Right, look, there's one more thing. And there always is. And that is the nature of me. Uh, but I can't go without bringing this to your attention. Right, now. My little celebrity brush. Did a brilliant job. It can live in my jar. But, if you feel or you lost a brush, or you know somebody who's lost a brush very similar to this. I am very, very happy to return it to its rightful owner. I can tell you when I, when I found it, about three weeks before I actually came down to do this class. But from you, I will need to know the name of the road I found it in. <laughs> Bye-bye, folks. Enjoy.